Sportswoman of the Year was Erica Mattingly of the Kansas City Roos, uh, who they won the WAC championship, and first time they had done that, had mm -hmm. a great, phenomenal season. Uh, you know, we've had uh, Dr. Brandon Martin on, who's the, the AD over there. Yeah. And, That's great. Uh, He's great on our guy. board. He's a board member. Yeah, he, yeah. great He's guy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, real quick on him, and he's a very energetic, good new person in town that has done a lot since Absolutely. he's walked into mm -hmm. this town. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I mean, yeah. rebranding the, yeah. the whole, you know, KC Ruse mm -hmm. was great. Um, but, yeah, Erica Mattingly, and she, she's she been kind of cleaning up at, at some awards. She won a, an SB2. Oh, did she? Yeah. I didn't even know that. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, That's they awesome. did. So they did, like, a Kansas City SB's like, online. I don't know if they really had a ceremony. Uh -huh. I just – it was announced on, like, Twitter – um, I think eight ten was eight ten was tweeting it out. I think they talked about it on air, but yeah. Um, so she's kind of been cleaning up. Um, but then executive of the year Brett Veach, um, easy coach yeah. of the year Andy <laughs> Reid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so th those were the award winners this year. I mean, obviously when you have a, a Super Bowl winning team, you know th those guys are going to clean up, and yeah. you know they they all do great things for Kansas City. They do, they do. Yeah. So the um, so Mick Schaefer hosted it. You guys had mm -hmm. it. It was on Forty One. Was um, for the first time. Yes. Obviously, Forty One is you know the official partner of broadcast partner of the Chiefs. So that was kind of an um, easy uh, ask of of them. Uh, you know, Kathy Nelson's background is in is in television production. So one of the the most memorable parts of the banquets always are the videos because mm -hmm. the you know, video production is just it's really high quality and you get you, you get some intimate interviews with the winners and then the winners come on stage and there's a little bit of a q a uh, that occurs at the podiums um yeah you know i mean I, we did not want to cancel but we didn't have a choice like yeah. anybody nobody has a choice these days um, and so we started thinking about what we wanted to do i mean you know i think for us our, our company is rooted in producing live events. It's really hard to talk through these idea of virtual events. Like, do we, yeah. you know, try and fake it with, like, having a few people in the room? I don't know. Like, that just doesn't feel very authentic. We were also trying to sort of capitalize on the fact that we knew that people were craving sports and craving mm -hmm. footage and, and just craving celebrating our teams and so on and so forth. So we got – we pitched to 41, um, you know, give us an hour – um, of free time, basically, but you can sell. We ended up producing like a 48 minute show and they sold 12 uh, minutes of advertisements. Um, and uh, we kept all our sponsorship money uh, and they, they agreed. They found some time, a time slot for us. And for them, I think it was a no brainer. Like, we just hand them the content. They didn't need mm -hmm. to spend any money to produce it or anything like that. They knew Kathy's background, they knew that, you know, what we were going to deliver was going to be quality. Um, so we put it together pretty quickly because we're sort of, again, like everybody, you're waiting, waiting, waiting to see if things are going to turn. And if you think there's a way that we could even host the event with half the number of people and, and then you just eventually have to make a decision and pull the plug and, and move forward. Um, so yeah, we edited, edited everything together. Um, Populous was the presenting sponsor of the banquet. They pivoted to be the presenting sponsor of the broadcast. So we filmed, um, some of the content at their offices, um, which was which was cool, and I think it turned out really well. We ended up actually bringing on five new sponsors that had not previously been affiliated wow. with the sports awards. Um, you know, because I, th I mean, it's, it's, it's we had a much bigger reach. You know, mm -hmm. our viewership was about twenty thousand on the night that it you know was broadcast, and then they did a couple encore presentations, and obviously now it lives on online. Um, so sponsors really got a good bang for their buck, and we ended up having about a 60% increase in net revenue um, generated as a result of, of sort of moving to the broadcast. Uh, so net, net, it was really good for our organization, particularly in a time when fundraising is, like, beyond critical. Yeah. We yeah. just, we don't have any... Um, we don't have anything else coming in right yeah. now. Well, the, the, the sad thing, on the other hand, would be Super Bowl champs, not getting yes. everybody to be there, media, yes. uh, your your sponsors, your your fans. Yeah. That 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 was the hard thing. It and, was a terrible it, year to yeah, yeah not yeah. have but to be able to. But you know what? Um, how would you like to be um, Las Vegas right now in the NFL draft? You know, I mean, I there you not, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they luckily, you know, I mean, for them, they'll still get it. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it, 
I, I, I watched it, you know, like I said, on, on the YouTube, and I, I thought the, the whole thing was, was great. It flowed well. Um, you know, we still got to hear from all the award winners. Yeah. Uh, you know, just in a little different format. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing we lost was that the, the in-person Q&A mm-hmm. at the banquet tends to be a little more, a little longer, right? Yeah. Um, there's more back and forth between the MC and the award winners, which is, to your point, is hard to replicate. You've got, we didn't have the time. Yeah. Like, you'd have to have a two-hour yeah. <laughs> broadcast in order to do that, and I don't think 41 mm-hmm. was going to be that generous. Um, but, but yeah, all in all, I think it, I think it turned out really well. Yeah. I mean, there may be a world in which down the road when we do host the in-person event again that there still is a broadcast component that we can that we can um you know leverage to have other people be exposed to what the sports commission does and the mm-hmm. award winners we'll, and so we'll, on and so we'll forth, bid on so. it to, to, to uh, everybody over there we'll we'll bid on doing it we can go worldwide web. okay good to yeah, know there you go wow. yeah click tv we're, yeah we're, we're in everybody's man cave you know that i do yeah. i do know that yeah, yeah. amazon roku yeah. apple tv uh you know but and and I mean that's good too to get the the sports commission more notoriety, yeah. you know, because a lot of people don't, you know, like, like we were saying earlier, you know, when the, when the parade happens, they don't think like, oh well, there's a group that has to plan this right. and yeah. put all this effort into it to make sure that, you know, it's not like you can just say, okay, well, the people are going to be here and we're going to, you know, I yeah, mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So yeah, no, it's know, not the Chiefs, pe- yeah. it's not the NFL. And it's, I mean, it's you know Kansas City, the city of Kansas City, in partnership with us. But yeah, I mean, we there's because it's expensive yeah. too, you know, mm-hmm. to, to to produce. Yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta people aren't giving you free porta potties, no. you know, and <laughs> no. hauling them, and no, nope. you know, getting those buses here, and yep. you know, all mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep. Um, you know, so let's kind of looking forward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the 2023 NFL Draft yeah. is going to be a big event. Uh, you know, hopefully, we're going to say that COVID's all done by then, uh, twenty twenty-three. Hopefully, yeah. Wow. If hopefully, there's a va- yeah vaccine by then, and then yeah. you know maybe we can be we can be good to go. <laughs> People can gather safely. Again. But uh, so, I mean, I'm sure you know you guys are kind of already in the planning, pre-planning stages. What are some talks and stuff you guys are having now about to kind of get us ready for that? Well, to be honest with you, we. We haven't really talked to them in great detail. We haven't really started planning. Um, Aside from the bid that we put together, which obviously there's a tremendous amount of legwork that goes into just building a a bid to host the event. So, you know, we gave them three different venues slash district options. Um, We've got hotel contracts in place, so room holds and things like that. Um, All of the potential venues are aware of the likely dates i can't i can't share that publicly Mm -hmm. quite yet but um so you know there's there's definitely pieces in place yeah um that are required to even start the like nitty-gritty planning um and the city's been engaged at all points but but we had but but, you know they got two more to get through now not to mention figuring out what to do with this season yeah there's a possibility we might be hosting an event in September, you know, in conjunction mm-hmm. with the first game of the season. Um, so there's not a real sense of urgency right now around the draft because we had so much in place prior to the announcement of it even coming. Okay. Gotcha. Um, makes sense. Are you- there any, like, can you, can you share the potential venues? Yeah. So the front runner venue uh, and I don't really, I don't see this changing unless, I mean, but who knows? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't put my name on anything these days. But anyway, so <laughs> Union Station. Um, it's just sort of become the, the, the de facto outdoor event stage of, of, of Kansas City. Um, but we need a really big f- footprint because the NFL draft activation has a lot of on-site components with, like, youth um, – sports engagement opportunities like pump pass kick and lots of sponsor activation um modules and pods that they need a lot of space to set up so the footprint is basically union station east around uh washington square park um potentially up around crown center like the ice rink and that area wow 
up or, and then south around uh, the top, the southern part of World War One, and the lawn up there. Uh, and then, you know, back down around, wrapping back around Union Station. Because, I mean, if you haven't attended a draft, you wouldn't know this, but they actually gate in the entire footprint for the draft. And they, there's security. You, have to, you get scanned when you go through the gates. It's a free event, but it's a ticketed event, so they'll scan your ticket. You, you'll have to go through metal detectors. You know, it's the same rules in place for attending an NFL game. You can't bring a bag in that's larger than, you know, for women like your cell phone and mm-hmm. all of that stuff has to be a clear bag. So all of those rules uh, for attending NFL games are in place when you attend an NFL draft. Um, so that that is what we are looking at. And then the stage setup, you know, it's TBD. It's a little fluid. It might be uh, sort of what we saw at the parade right in front of Union Station. Um, there are some conversations about potentially using the Henry Block Fountain um, as a circle in the round stage. Oh, that'd be They've cool. never really done a, a circle in, in the round, so that mm-hmm. might, you know, maybe pivots and so that Union Station becomes a backdrop and then, World War, you know, the yeah. Memorial becomes a backdrop. There's a lot of engineering um, sort of questions that need to be answered with respect to potentially building over Henry Block Fountain. Mm-hmm. So it might not even be viable. Um, those conversations are preliminary. They're happening, you know, but again, there's, we have some time with that yeah. one. Well, we really cool. have some time with that one. Um, yeah. I mean, once we've, we've checked, again, I said hotels, we've got transportation covered. We have to, you know, we have parking. So all we had to have basically the plan in place before submitting a final proposal to right. them. I think it was last year at the sports commission. Was it announced by then last year? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember if I was talking to you or, or Kathy, but I asked one of you, I said, how much did the, you know, having the power of the hunts, you know, Lamar Hunt Trophy and all that help out, and one of you, whoever it was, said, not at all. No. They have how many other owners that they have yeah. to answer oh, to. Yeah. So that just shows you how hard you guys worked in, in what you do and, and how valuable the Sports Commission is, again, to Kansas City. Yes. One, uh, yes. one thing I was actually curious about, when you guys are submitting a bid for that, uh, are you guys aware of the other cities that are also competing against you for that? Yes. So do you try to match it? Like, so you look at, say, the city I don't like, St. Louis, is like, say they were bidding on it, and so you, uh, like, do you pick certain things you maybe think they're they're not as good at us in, and so you present something that, like, we're better at? So is it more like a competition type thing? Like a matchup deal? No, I wouldn't say that so much. Um no, I mean, I think you're really, we're really just trying to put our best foot forward. Right. For us, we were more focused on the year because of we, – we wanted to – there were a couple years that wouldn't have necessarily worked for us. Now this, again, now we're talking during a completely different time. But there were a couple of years where Visit KC had locked in some massive conferences okay. around the same time. So we would not have been able to deliver the hotel rooms – um, because they were already reserved, or some of the venues were not right. available. So, um, you know, you know the cities that you're competing in, but they also, the bid went out, and I think it was for, you know, you were bidding to host 21 through 24. So you had, a, you know, a number of years. Um, and so we really wanted to sort of push them towards a certain year, given the power of, of the bid. That makes sense. And also, sense. again, going back to them and saying, like, if you wanted to host during this time in 22, we can't do it in Kansas City because we've got we got other things going on, right. which is the best thing to be able to say yeah. to the yeah. NFL, who thinks they are the biggest thing in the world, right? Like mm-hmm. we'd love to host you, but actually, other people want to hang out with us too. <laughs> so you well, know, shoot, maybe, maybe, maybe you should look that. at. Maybe they were I mean, I think, said, oh. I think hey, we, was, we want we want to be in KC. It was uh, part of it. And what is and then another thing too? I was, I was kind of curious about when a city hosts. Are they allowed to submit a bid to host again, like, immediately? Or do they have to wait, like, a certain amount of time before they can do it? You know, it varies. Some entities require a waiting period. Some don't. It really just, you know, the bid process is so uh, different from property and partner to partner, right? Like, an NCAA bid process is very different from a USA figure skating or a USA gymnastics bid process, which is incredibly different from the NFL draft bid process. Um, and little known fact, the Sports Commission has actually been really critical in helping a lot of these big organizations streamline and improve their bid process, particularly the NCAA. Like it used to be before that every sport, every division had their own individual bid process. And Kathy was one of the people that went to them and was like, this is crazy. Like you can't 
you can't expect all of these different markets to submit, particularly if you're a smaller market.